All right, one thing I'm going to do, get all these pieces prepped for priming. I just need to give them a good little buffing, you know, so that they're not perfectly smooth. Clean them up a little bit. I got most of the nubs off already, so just want to make sure that surface is not perfectly smooth and that it'll want to take off or hold on to some of that paint. And I am just using a little cheapo fingernail buffing pad. It's usually what I'll do to clean up nubs and stuff. Probably gonna be hard to see, but you know, just not quite as shiny as it was. You know, just take off some of that. This one. You know, some of these things, yeah, they're a little rough. I honestly don't care that much. I kind of just want to get it done at this point. I mean, it's not a full-on contest piece. It's just kind of a little competition we're having with uh, our Gundam group. It ain't got to be perfect, guys. Just wanted to make something semi-original. And it had to be the grunt suit. And Gray's is the grunt suit, at least, of IBO. So. You guys, of course, have watched me for any amount of time. I'm talking about my IBO sets. You know I like the Gray's. They're pretty cool. I like that. Not the shoulder. Look at the flat pieces. They're easy to see. So yes, good. Scratches in there. <clears throat> I do have some sandpaper. I'll probably do a wet sand later. We'll see. I don't know. I'm going to run out of time today on painting. I can already feel it. I'm going to be working all day because some of these things are with the two colors. That's going to be a pain in the butt. I can already feel it. I'm going to have to do some masking, so I'm pretty sure I can use the sticky tack to do some masking, but it actually might work out pretty well. Okay, next. Like I said, just trying to get a quick little rub and buff here. Just mar the surface, just a little bit. If I use something like the uh, like my files, it's going to really gouge that surface, and that's not really what we want. Just want a lightly not smooth surface to hold on to that primer. Might help if I switch to the bigger buffing stick. Yeah, so this one's definitely. A little bit better. Oh yeah. That's really roughing up the surface though. That's probably too much. Now these I really do need I need to smooth those out where I did that. So, try to take that seam line out as good as I can. Shouldn't be too hard. That's my first time using that super thin Tamiya cement. It works, for sure. Of course, it has a little bit of discoloration to the plastic because it does melt it. But it's getting painted, so I guess it doesn't matter, huh? It's not perfect. Still a bit of a seam line there, but I'm not too concerned about it. I just wanted to see if I could do it. I'll try it out better on another project, but so far it's not too bad. Not bad. 
There is one problem with using a stick like this because the different sides have different grits on it. You gotta be careful you don't accidentally run it down, like say a really rough side when you're trying to buff. So, gotta be a little careful on that. And just get the side just roughed up a little bit. I'm really hoping that the panel lines in this will actually help me out in the way of masking. Because I want to try to put a bit of masking tape right there and cram it into the seam line. Save it like the edge of a knife. So I think what I'm going to do is paint the... Yeah, I'm probably going to paint the flat black first. Mask off this area and then gun metal the rest of it. Another thing in that square or that triangle, like on the Hyakarin, needs to be uh, yellow. That's why I bought the bright yellow. Okay. Let's see how this one comes out. Probably a little bit nicer. Eh, a little bit. Probably need a thicker coat of glue, really, but oh well. No, I just wanted to see what it would do. I didn't have to seam line it at all. I could have just painted them separate. Though, realistically, I think with these pieces, like this shoulder armor and these legs, when they're two pieces, you want to assemble them, then paint them. So that way the paint is even across it. You know, if you try to separate it and then paint it, it's probably not going to come out too well. Yeah, the acetone definitely had a, did a number on this plastic. Buff it out a little bit. A little bit smoother. Not too bad. Maybe when it's painted over, it'll look okay. Give it a good coat of primer. And I really wish I had some black or gray primer, but I couldn't find any from Tamiya. Now I do have this primer, but I think this is for heavier stuff. I mean, I'm kind of scared to really use that. The fine surface primer, I know I can trust. I know what it does. Because what I was going to do was prime the lighter colors with white and the darker colors with the dark. So they would stand out a little bit. Okay. That's definitely buffed. How good it's going to be? Mm, kind of anyone's guess. And yeah, I'm just polishing it on my shirt real quick, getting off some of the dust. Sumi is what it is. Okay. Uh, stupid thing is I already sort of buffed these. This is bigger. I'm going to go with something like this. I do like these because they're only like a dollar. And they do work. You can get them at any Walgreens or Walmart or drugstore, things like that. Just go to the, uh, um, like, nail polish, that kind of stuff. Go in there. And I do like them because they are soft, so they are pliable. They run over the surface. That even if it's uneven, you can... Get a decent sand. I've already gone over this one just a little bit to take off the nubs, so it's not too bad already. Oh, actually, it looks like I missed a nub right there.
Okay, no more nub. So I'm gonna say Oh, this is going to be a long process, guys. I'm not used to doing two-tone paint jobs, or at least not on the same piece. But I really want this to have a different look. At least with these parts, I can take off half of it. I don't have to try to paint the whole thing if only I'm doing this in the flat black here. And I could probably do it with uh, the putty, and hopefully it doesn't take off paint. Just guessing it won't, to be perfectly honest. I mean, it's tacky, but I think if I stick it on there, paint what I need to, it should be okay. Because if I go the other way, if I paint, if I mask this off, go ahead and hit this with the flat gray or flat black, then reassemble, and then I can mask that off because it's essentially just a straight line to do the gunmetal. So that'll probably work out better. At least in my mind it will. I have no idea in reality how hard. Now this one, it's going to be matte black up here, gunmetal down here. These guys, they're going to be kind of a combination of all three colors with a dab of silver in the middle. So. And if you'll notice, some of these parts are panel lined already. It's because like these extra bits from the Gray's Ritter were panel lined already, after, but I never used them. Because the Ritter doesn't use these um, little wing thingies on the back. Wing shield things. Okay. These got a little reshaped like I showed you last night, or last time. They're going to get uh, two different colors too. So this is going to be, um, actually you know what, I just thought about that. So they're going to be like this. And I said this was going to be flat black and this is going to be gloss. Might have to, or the uh, gun metal. Might have to uh, change that. So this will be flat, this will be, or flat. Mm, no, I was right. Matte black gun metal up here. I dropped that. Because this, no, because this is going to be the other way. This is going to be gun metal and flat. So maybe I had it right the first time. <laughs> Gotta find that piece. Oh, there it is. It didn't go very far. Okay. So, see, I didn't quite have all my plan figured out just yet. Sometimes you gotta figure it out as you go. Thank God, a lot of this is very angular, so it should make it pretty easy. If it's curvy, that would make it hard to mask off. And I do have some blue painter's tape, which probably be my go-to for most of the masking. There's a mosquito in here. It's only October. Then the legs, like these, this will all be gunmetal. The main color is going to be gunmetal, and then the little tabs are going to be flat black. So that's going to be real easy to mask off. So odds are I'll just mat I'll do the black, the matte black first. Then that's easier to mask. So much smaller piece to have to mask off. Now that one has a big old divot on it. I don't think I can repair. Or sand out. Way too big and no removable there is what happened. <sighs> I fully admit I started this way later in the day than I wanted to. So that means I'm gonna be popping in and out all night, probably painting things. <laughs> oh well. 
What else are you going to do on a Friday night, huh? I've already did those pretty good. When the edges of your pieces are so sharp, they're damaging the sanding medium. Okay, and then these are going to be gunmetal. Definite gunmetal pieces. That would be way too hard to try to mask off something like this. So that's just going to be all gunmetal. Same thing with the collar. I tried to go as close to the actual gray's color scheme or color organization as I could, but sometimes it's hard, I admit. <laughs> That's one reason why I used as many parts as I could from the same uh, kit to build this so that I could still keep that color separation in mind. As soon as you change the color, it's like, uh, what color is it going to be? You know, it's hard to envision it. And you've got different parts of the same color. Okay. Sometimes it's easier to hold the piece and run it over the sandpaper. I could time lapse this, guys. I'll probably actually accelerate a lot of the work just in post. But I wanted to be able to talk about what I'm doing without having to pause every few seconds, but I can always chop and speed things up a little bit. I don't want this video to be stupid long, but, you know, it is what it is. You guys know I do long videos. It's a build video. It's going to take a while. Get over it. <laughs> and then the head's going to be two-tone. The top's going to be gunmetal, and the rest is going to be matte. I think it'll be good. So, I even went with these normal Gray's helmet. <clears throat> Do what I can to smooth that out. Yeah, that's a bad little bite there. So, you know. When they put the friggin' nub right in the middle of the helmet. Sorry, that nub was going to be bad if I didn't take it out. Alright. Now let's put that down. Oh yeah. Much better. Alright. Front skirts. Yeah. 
I just want to see this guy in the paint, at least to the point of being primed, to just make some progress. Getting the frame painted yesterday, you know, it felt good, you know. But trying to get this guy all the same color finally, or at least <laughs> most, mostly the same color, would be great. And I could just do it all one color, I could just all do it gunmetal, but I want that flat black. And I guess realistically, if I really wanted to, I could just do it as a mask off the paint and do the flat uh, clear coat over the existing thing. Maybe, we'll see. But then it'd just be a flat gun metal. I want it to be flat black. Or it's actually a matte black, it's not fat. In case you guys don't know, it's not exactly the same. Now that gunship gray, I'm gonna have to test, test it on a couple pieces. Because usually that's got like a hint of blue in it, so that'll be an interesting offset color. <clears throat> and actually, because this has the little arm cannons on it, I might give that a spritz of uh, silver first. So prime it and then give a blast of silver to silver up the guns. I don't know. Might just leave it. We'll see. Because the actual gun, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. I can't take it apart. <laughs> I can remove little bits like here and th these, but all of this is all glued on already. Which, you know, was probably a mistake, but I could definitely prime this thing all together without a problem. And then figure out what I want to do, because even if I do this whole bottom section one whole color, and then maybe do this another, so have this be like the, the matte black, and then this all be the gun metal, something like that. I think it would work. I don't think it needs any silver, so we'll see. Mm, I don't even think I'm going to sand that, to be honest. The gun is the least important part. The swords are actually more important. Which the swords, like I said before, I think I'm going to do either a matte black, probably down the middle, or gun metal, we'll see. Because I can always do the gun metal and then hit it with the clear coat and matte it out. But I want the, I think I want the handle to be a matte color, like the actual black. Whoa, <laughs> that was almost bad. I almost put it on the heavy grinding stuff there. It's like, no, I want a buff. I don't want to sand that thing out of existence. Oh, there's another really rough nub. Oh, helps if I actually sand the right spot. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Actually, that's that's not bad. You can't really see the reflectiveness is reduced, but look at the top. See how shiny the top is versus that? Nah, that's kind of what we're going for. <sighs> this is usually where I get impatient. I'm not gonna lie, I'll just get impatient and start priming without doing any of this work. Because after I do this, I still have to put everything on sticks. <laughs> I am happy for the monocolor pieces because those only have to be done once. You know, maybe a uh, second coat. Let's see. I've got two different types of clear. I've got the flat and I've got the semi gloss. I might go with the semi gloss on almost all of it, anyways. How I'm going to mask that off from the matte paint, I don't know. Don't want to ruin my matte finish by accidentally giving it some gloss. Anyway, I'm gonna to commit to it and just do what I gotta do, guys, because I only got a day. I pretty much have today to finish this. I mean, I can work on a Sunday, but it depends on what our plans are. Because as it stands right now, we're supposed to go to the Renaissance Festival. I'm supposed to. We'll see what happens. I don't know what just happened there. No. Oh. I'm okay if this guy has a couple scars. He's probably seen some battles. That is the hardest thing in the universe. 
see sand right there. Actually, you know what? I might do the back, back of the hand matte black. So it'll be the arm guard, and then the back of the hand, and then the rest of it's going to... Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I had to think about it. Because right now I've got, you know, dozens of pieces here split up, and like, okay, what's this color going to be? Whoa, careful. Okay. What next? That's going to be nearly impossible to sand. little custom side piece on the top of the head here. In case you guys forgot, like I got that going on. Come on, focus. So I think that all being the same color is a good thing. You don't see half of it, but that's okay. And then this. I don't dare I can technically sand the parts I need to, so I'll just leave it be. Same thing kind of with this, it's all oblong. Now the thing about the chest piece, like the ribs, um, the rib parts are actually going to be yellow, but I'm going to paint those by hand. But this part is going to get uh, matte blacked, so I'm going to have to do it, you know, prime them all, kind of mask it off as good as I can, and then paint the ribs in later. Okay. Kind of buffed these up last night, so they might actually be okay right now. Now, the, like I said before, the gunship gray is the question mark. Like, how is that going to look? That's why I chose so few parts to be that color. And actually with the grays, the bottom of the feet, like the actual feet and heels, are usually a completely different color anyways, or a darker color. So to have that right underneath the gunmetal foot armor will probably be okay. I think it'll be an interesting look to say the least. I mean you'll see the difference, but it won't be ridiculous. It's not going to be like a purple and yellow or something right next to each other. How did that happen? Nice big gouge in that. Oh well. It's all part of the story. I'm probably going to have to prime these in stages. Or find me another empty box because, as you can see, you know, <laughs> that's how that works. I do look forward to it. Scared, but I look forward to it. Isn't anything good unless it's supposed to scare you first? I already sanded that fairly well last night. I did think about dual coloring these. Gunmetal and flat. Like, gunmetal here, flat here. Eh, might still good. Not really stopping it, and like I said, being very angular, that would actually be not too hard to mask. Let me see here, let me think. The gun metal and the elbow flat. That actually would probably look really, really good, guys. I mean, this would probably look good too, but I think that would look better. Yeah, I'll probably go with that. So move those out of this pile into the dual color pile, you know. So if I prime these things by what color they're going to be, it actually makes my life easy. <laughs> so I always keep them sorted. So like say these four pieces right here are only going to be this color. So I can go ahead and prime those, no problem. Let's see here. So, got that. I just gotta be careful and not do what I did with those thrusters and just, you know, screw up. The whole inside of this is inconsequential. See, this is why I like the, the sticky tack. And I don't have to find a spot for a uh, 
clamp to go on. Did you tell me where where would I where would I put an alligator clip on that? I don't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you. Are you ready, kids? Okay. Yeah, these feet. Feet armor. Okay. So let me reorganize slightly here. So I can keep everything sort of together. There's no tag on that. <laughs> Oh, it's got still over here. See that thruster I painted a little while ago? Already dry. At least to the touch. And that's all that really matters, to be honest. Let's go ahead and crank that down there. What I don't want is a whole lot of... So I gotta make sure I get underneath as well as I can. Where's that one? Okay. Those little thrusters are good. Alright, so that's why I leave all my silver bits over here out of the way. I'm not even gonna worry about them. They are done. D D U N guys. Make sure I don't cut off any of the stuff I need to paint. To be honest, I bought a ton, ton of this blue tack. You know what? That part right there is not even going to be exposed, so I may as well cover it. Do the rest of it like so. I got to pay way more attention this time because I wouldn't have made so many mistakes with the silver. But having silver on top of gray, it was really hard to see what was going on. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so the entire inside of this is inconsequential, just needs to be covered at some point. See? It's like gum. Only tastier. Whoa, whoa. Get up there. Okay, let me separate these a little bit better. side of these arms, totally inconsequential. Yes, I have to show you every single piece. So don't ask. Does he have to show us every single piece? Yes. Okay. That one's barely stuck in there. Gotta get some of the exposed tag here. If it's too covered in paint, I don't think it's gonna stick very well. I need this one to stick pretty well. Okay. More sticks. Let's see here. Helmet. Said the inside of this guy doesn't matter as much as the outside. So just need to make sure I get that around the edges. 
And I'll probably add a couple dabs of extra paint to that. Now, which way does this guy face? This is the inside. But the end caps don't matter at all, so I could do it this way. How's my armpit there, guys? Yeah. Since you don't see the ends of this at all, I only need the middle painted. May as well do it that way. But I need the backside to not be totally open. So that'll probably help too. Okay, now I need some more tack. Because I've only got well, three more little pieces right here that need to be painted. Of course, I have all this right here. <laughs> be right back. Okay, lots of tack. There we go. It's also good for getting crud off your fingers. I just hope it doesn't leave anything behind. That's why it's also not going on any surface of anything I'm working on. Okay, Gray's face. No, no. Okay, fine. I'll go over here. I didn't like that spot. Okay, I'm going to turn that one because it's just... Or, oh yeah, just move it. Make a new one entirely. There we go. Uh, need more sticks. Which I have plenty of. <clears throat> Probably only need one, at least for this part. I'm gonna get all these pieces primed, bring them inside to dry. Probably take them all off and then stick them wherever. Backs of the hands are super important. Super important, guys. Just the top. Come on. There it goes. Yeah, I wish I had a foam block, guys, but I wasn't going to spend five or six bucks on a foam block to do what I already have a cardboard box to do. some primer. I think I have a large can of primer. I hope it's enough. I thought I bought... I really thought I bought another can of primer like this. If I have to use some of that, I will, but I'll use it on the larger pieces. I don't know if I trust it on the small ones, to be totally honest. Let's see here. I think I need to make some more sticks. I need to put more stuff in this box. get around to doing the masking and stuff I'm probably just gonna do a time lapse of that and make my life easy okay so that part faces inward and towards the back not too concerned don't want to get too many pieces close together because then you're not gonna get good coverage okay what was that that was the backpack Oh, may as well go ahead and get this. I 
Yay. Yay for that part. Get in there. Okay. If I have to pull something out individually and do it, I will. That's not a problem. Okay, four more pieces I can do here. Oh, might as well get that piece done. I'm gonna be able to at least finish something here. Okay. I think whenever I actually do get around to painting these, I will do it a little more individually. Make sure I can get full coverage by rotating stuff around. Okay. Though oddly enough, I found out one of these bamboo sticks is in fact the exact height or well thickness of a crotch peg. <laughs> so it fits perfect in the crotch of the grays. Which sounds really funny when you say it out loud. Okay, the back of this is not super important. Just gonna make sure it gets coverage later. Let's see here. Good. There we go. That's a little bit better. I feel like I'm decorating a kind of a cake or something, guys. Okay, two more. Um, what do I want to go for here? Okay. Put it down. Stick it in there in a second. And we'll go outside here in a little bit. As soon as I get this last piece on, and I will try to prime these things. Hard part being such a bright color, I need to do a decent amount of priming. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I gotta get a decent amount of primer on there because I gotta cover up all this pink with black. <laughs> Yeah, not going to be super easy. Also not going to be that hard, but not going to be super easy. So there's that. Actually, you know what? Let's go a little sharper and go down here with it. That's better. Uh, where did that go? Oh, it's only right there. It would be nice to have a paint booth. Okay, so that's it for that. Okay. 
Thank you. 